So it's 2022, or whenever you're watching this, is the barbell row worth including in your training program? Let's take a look. Now, the first thing that complicates this question is the fact that there's not just one way to row. When you say the barbell overhead press, you kind of know what you're getting. Yes, there is, you know, a push press. Yes, there is a cloak off press. But if you just say barbell overhead press, pretty much everyone knows what you're talking about. But that's not true for the barbell row. You can do them flexion style, like Mike Isretel does, where you're often on a deficit, your torso is very, very inclined, and it's done in a very, very strict manner. I think these are a great way to do them, but they're gonna be very different from something like a dead row, or what I like to call a Rubish row after Pete Rubish, that is performed very, very explosively using a large amount of hip drive, done specifically for the purpose to improve your deadlift. You could also do them sort of Ed Cone style. I think uh, Kaylor Wollum also does them this way, where it is performed floating during the set. So you're not returning it to the ground each rep like Pete Rubish does, but you are just sort of floating it during the set, but you're still using quite a bit of butt, hips, glutes, hamstrings, lower back involved to move the weight. You could also do them Penley style where it is performed on the ground each rep, but you're not really using as much hip drive. You're keeping your torso angle fairly fixed and you're just pulling mostly towards the chest. This is gonna be quite different from something like a flexion row. Or you could perform them Yates style where you're not even all that bent over and your torso is perhaps 45, maybe even only 30 degrees bent over. And this kind of takes the lower back out of it a little bit. And you can either, you know, pull more back for more traps or more down for more lats. Both good options, all good options. And they're all barbell rows. Plus you have the grip factor as well. You could go overhand, you can go underhand. You could take a, a narrow grip, a wider grip. There are a lot of options with this movement. This discussion I actually find to be quite interesting because a lot of the reasons that people give for not doing barbell rows are the exact same reasons why a lot of people should be doing barbell rows. For example, what am I, British? For example, a lot of people say that the limiting factor is not actually your lats or your traps, which is what you're usually using this movement to build up it's actually your spinal erectors or your core or your ability to brace or your overall torso rigidity. I would say this is often the case, but it's not necessarily a reason to avoid this movement for most people. And to me, this is almost like saying, I don't do reverse grip curls because I find that my grip gives out. That's half the reason that you're doing that exercise. Congratulations, you've identified a weakness. And not only that, you've identified an exercise that can help correct that weakness. It's not something you should necessarily avoid. That being said, often the lower back just can't tolerate nearly as much volume compared to the lats and traps. The lats and the traps both are extremely resilient and you can almost always do more volume of a chest supported row or a helms row or a machine row or something like that or a seal row compared to a barbell bent over row. There's just little to no axial loading and you're targeting the muscles that are more resilient compared to the spinal erector. So I would say you can include other rowing exercises as well in your program. And this is especially true if you are more advanced. Some advanced guys just don't do barbell rows at all because they are already squatting and deadlifting. And both of those are also gonna be using the spinal erectors and you have a limited amount of training money. Why make trillions when we could make billions? That you can spend. And the lower back just doesn't have that much money. And therefore, especially if you know yourself and you're more advanced, I would say avoiding the barbell row is a completely legitimate thing to do. And I watched a video by Alpha Destiny a few months ago. I think it was titled like why I rarely do barbell rows or why I don't do them very often or something like that. It wasn't why I don't do them. It's just why I don't do them that often. And this makes sense just because he's focused on other things and he wants to spend that training money on doing something else. And if you look at my training log for the row movement pattern, that's just how I divide up my training log. It's also how I divide things up in my book, which you can also pick up a copy of if you are interested in some training knowledge gains. It is mostly chest supported rows, machine rows, 
other chest supported rows, uh, helms rows, cable rows, that type of thing. Things that aren't really loading the spinal erectors as heavily. And for to train the spinal erectors, I'm doing squats and deadlifts, especially from a deficit. And it's also safe to say that I don't have lagging spinal erectors, and therefore it's just not something that I really need to focus on. But if you're not squatting, you're not deadlifting, your leg workout is like split squats, leg press, leg extension, which I've seen before, and then you're like, well, I don't do barbell rows because like I don't want to overtrain my lower back. You're not even training your lower back, okay? The lower back is the weakness, the limiting factor for you because it is weak and you should train it, point blank. Now, are they worth doing as a deadlift accessory? Well, I'm, I'm certainly not a strength coach or a strength expert. I would say maybe, it depends on your weakness. If your back is a weakness, especially if your spinal erectors are a weakness, I would say this is potentially a very good movement. Um, Ed Cohn does them, Kayla Willem does them, not even necessarily, I'm not saying you know they have weak backs at all, freaking look at them, um, but they find that they get a lot out of this movement and it does have carryover. For me, I find that I am weaker off of the floor and so I have to work on more like quad and adductor strength to have the best carryover. If I don't deadlift for a while and I just blow up my squat, usually my deadlift goes up as well. I also do think that enjoyment is also a factor. Like when I'm doing heavy dead rows, rubbish rows, you know, two plates, two and a half plates, three plates or more, that's not to build muscle. And past a certain extent, it's not even really building my deadlift, but it's just fun. It's just super fucking fun to grab a heavy barbell and rocket launch that shit into the air. There's also the issue of convenience. If you have a home gym, you're probably gonna be more likely to do barbell rows compared to someone who is in this gym with lots of equipment and you know three different types of machine rows, etc. And you can still build a ridiculous back just from barbell rows. For sure, okay? Anyone who says, like, oh, you're you're never gonna be able to get big just from a barbell. It might not be optimal, but it can certainly work. So decide which barbell row that you prefer doing. If it's a flexion style row with very, very controlled and strict form, completely fine. That can work really, really well. If it's a penlay row where you're bent over and pulling a little bit higher, also totally fine. I don't do those just because I don't feel like I get very much out of them. It doesn't mean they're bad movements. They're just not movements that I like to do. If I want to have a very controlled style, I would rather do something with chest support. And if I want to go heavy, I'll do a dead row, a cone row, or a Yates row. And I find that those are good movements for me. But at this point in my training career, if that's what you want to call it. No. Training career. They're sort of taking a back seat to the other variations. And there's nothing wrong with that. And you'll probably find that what is ideal for year one or year two might not be ideal for year 7910. Another argument is that you might not be able to hold onto the bar or it's difficult to keep your grip on a barbell. Keep at it, okay? Your forearms will adapt, your grip will improve. And again, you've identified a weakness and you've also identified a way to fix that weakness. And people are acting like this is somehow a bad thing. Or use straps, right? Like no one actually cares if you use straps on your rows. It, it's it's fine. So whether or not you want to keep the barbell row in your program depends on your program. It depends on you. It depends on your goals. It could be a very nice option or it could not make any sense at all. Don't be dogmatic. Don't just include something because someone says you have to include it, something. And don't also not include it because someone says it's a bad exercise. Think objectively, look at all of the factors and see if it's worth doing for you. Anyway, for more on the different types of rowing movements as well as programming advice, definitely check out my book. It is 200 pages with zero fluff. It's only one million dollars. Twenty dollars currently. I am consistently and constantly urged to increase the price, but I have not. <laughs> At least, at least not yet. So definitely grab a copy of that. I do appreciate it. This is the only way that I monetize these videos. Thank you so much for the support. Like, subscribe, share, do YouTube stuff.
and I will see you in the next video. Peace.